All right, hello, Honors 410. So uh, we're at an interesting point in the course where we have a lot of different moving pieces. Um, so first of all, just want to address um, Communal Writing Project Parts 2. Um, if everyone came, came in on time, my expectation is I'll be posting those alongside today's class discussion and giving some room below for us to talk about them. Um, for tomorrow's class, I'm not going to do a video lecture. Um, we're going to have our third group-led discussion video, um, and then uh, you might notice on the syllabus it lists horse girl um, so I referenced horse girl in our very first class session um, it's a film that is available to stream on Netflix um, so if you have access to Netflix if you are a subscriber or you have a friend who has shared a password with you or whatever the case may be um, I do strongly encourage you to take some time over the next couple days to watch this film um, so there's no assigned reading for these next couple class sessions um, in part because uh, I'm, I'm kind of diverting it to, to that purpose. Um, after some consideration, I decided that I was not going to make Netflix an official uh, assigned text or requirement for this class. Um, mostly, I didn't feel right uh, making people pay for a subscription just to watch this one movie. So, uh, kind of honor system here. If you're truly unable to watch this movie, um, I, I can excuse you from it. Um, you do not have to watch it for the purposes of this class. Um, but to get the most out of the class, and particularly to get um, the most out of our class discussion that's going to come up on Monday of next week, um, I do encourage you strongly to watch it if it is available to you. Um, one other point I did want to clarify about that, though, um, this film does include some nudity, um, does include some sexual themes, um, nothing over the top in my estimation, although everyone's judgment around these things obviously is a, a little bit different. But in any case, in, in case you're, uh, you're in an environment where you're uh, responsible for watching younger siblings or you you throw something on to watch while you're in the vicinity of your parents, um, depending on your relationship and what kind of stuff you all watch together, uh, just be forewarned. There is some adult content uh, in this film, and so you want to be mindful of, of how or where or uh, when you're consuming uh, this thing. But okay, so... Um, again, today, communal writing project pieces. Um, for tomorrow's class, we're going to have um, just the, the group-led discussion, and I might have some other announcements I'll put in text form. Um, for Friday's class, I plan to have a short video lecture to kind of talk about um, some upcoming assignment stuff and other announcements. Um, but my expectation is that more so we'll focus on Friday's class on the final group-led video discussion, um, as well as our next set of communal writing project pieces. Um, and then going Going into the following week, we'll, we'll return a little bit more to kind of our, our, our normal, so to speak, uh, format for the class. But uh, I know it's a lot of moving pieces. I encourage you to you know, look through the syllabus yourself to kind of keep track of, of where everything is. Um, but, but hopefully uh, this all makes sense to folks and we can uh, carry on from there. Um, Okay, so for the uh, communal writing, uh, actually not the communal writing project, so for the, the critical essay uh, is the next thing that I, I wanted to get to. Um, so this is an assignment, um, it's our next major assignment that's going to be coming up. Um, so I have the prompt and the grade guide, which uh, I intend to post uh, along with this discussion thread as well. Um, they're also available in the official assignment folder. Um, this assignment is coming up at this point, right? So it's a little less than a week away. Um, it's on Tuesday that it's going to be due. So I did want to talk through... Um, this, this assignment here with you all. So uh, if you want to open the prompt, if you're able to do that while you're watching this video, I think you'll probably get the most out of this. Uh, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but I'm going to kind of scroll through and talk through some of the highlights and things that are important for folks to know. Um, so uh, th this is how I structure most of the assignment prompts, as you you've seen to some extent already. Um, what is this assignment? So the idea basically is that this is a relatively traditional academic essay, thesis-driven with, with body paragraphs, topic sentences, so on and so forth, um, where you're going to be addressing um, just kind of what you think in the course up to this point. Um, so as it references in the prompt, we have that first reading from uh, Harry Potter. We have a loft and rain, which will both have completed uh, uh, before this essay is due. Um, we'll have Horse Girl, which hopefully most of you will be able to watch. Um, and we'll have Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, which is kind of butting up against when this essay is due, but you, you may have watched by that point as well. Um, so at, at, at this stage, um, you're tasked with creating an original argument. Um, and I'll give you some ideas here, kind of in the middle of that first paragraph where I talk about um, 
what, what what this kind of fiction does, speculative fiction, um, what what it does in terms of giving commentary on the real world, um, why it might be valuable for academic study, why people are entertained by it, so on and so forth. Um, these are all ideas I think readily someone could write a four-page essay about. Um, and so if one of those appeals to you, you're already thinking about it, feel free to, to go in that direction, and craft an original thesis around one of those ideas. Um, you can also go well away from those ideas uh, to other things that, that you're thinking about and want to create an argument around. Um, this can be focused on one single text that we've read so far um, and really picking that apart and developing an original argument based on that. It can also be about kind of broader messaging, putting one or more or, or even all of the readings we've had so far kind of in conversation to each other to talk about you know, what, what they taught us, what you learned from them, what you can glean based on kind of interconnections you're seeing between those things. Um, but in any event, um, please don't try to write an essay that addresses all of the, the questions or all of the ideas that I gave you in the prompt. Um, using all of them, it's probably going to be nearly impossible to create one cohesive argument out of that. Um, but choosing um, you know, any given one of those, or potentially a couple of them in conversation with each other, um, very reasonably could give you a, a, an interesting thesis and allow you to work from there. Um, so with that, um, in the next paragraph it references, uh, I am discouraging outside research for the purpose of this essay. I know that's a little bit unusual for, for lots of folks. Um, basically the idea with that is because it's, it's relatively short, because you have a fair amount of text you can potentially be working with, um, if you lean into outside research pretty quickly you can lose your own voice in a paper like this. And I want to make sure it's your original ideas we're focusing on in this essay. Um, all that said, if you have a specific idea already based on something that you read from outside this class um, based on a different, you know, book or film or TV series that you were watching that might be sort of interesting in this conversation. I, I'm certainly open to you including that. I'm just asking you not to go out of your way to try to find original research. Um, or if you have ideas that would kind of demand a little bit more research, uh, be in touch with me. Let me know what you're thinking and we can communicate about whether it's really appropriate for the assignment at hand. Um, but okay, and I have the formatting guidelines in the, the last paragraph of the first section there. Um, I also referenced the grade guides. That's the other document that I've uploaded. It's, uh, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, a rubric essentially for what I'm looking for in the assignment. Um, so I often suggest using that as sort of a checklist after you've written your paper, um, or maybe to guide you before you start writing. If you're a little bit stumped on, on what the paper's really asking for, um, it's a lot of similar information to what's in the prompt, but in a, organized in a different way that might help you kind of wrap your head around it, um, depending on how you're brain works and if that kind of communicates more clearly to you. Um, but okay, that's basically the essentials of this thing. So I mean, it's going to be due Tuesday of next week at 11 a.m. So um, I know that's relatively quick, but also in a summer class like this, um, again, every week is essentially like three weeks or so, or at least two and a half weeks of a conventional semester's class. Um, so this is, you know, I, I hope sufficient lead time for people to be able to work on this essay. Um, and I always look forward to seeing what people come up with this. But don't be afraid to look back on earlier discussion posts, to look back at your journal entries, things along those lines, to get ideas. Um, a lot of times you might see that sort of you have themes about what you're writing about consciously or unconsciously that might help guide you towards what this essay should really be about. Um, so by all means, uh, let me know if you have questions in the discussion board below, um, but also feel free to follow up with me individually if you'd like to talk this over or just you know, message me some questions uh, around this assignment. Um, okay, with all of that squared away, we're going to switch gears one more time um, and at this point go uh, back into Rain um, from the Joe Hill book. So um, for our next section here, um, Pages 399 to, to four, uh, 402 here. Um, in this section, um, I wanted to just kind of revisit. Uh, I'm going to ask it as a question, but it's not a trick question. Um, it's, it is pretty much right there in the text there. Um, but in 399 to 402, um, what did Honeysuckle do to Gumby um, at this stage of the story? Um, and uh, I think kind of it is an important question. Um, is honey just uh, honeysuckle justified in what she's doing here? Um, is is this the right course of action? Um, is this more broadly in kind of a more philosophical sense just? Um, I think that these are kind of interesting questions that we don't necessarily all need to have uh, the same answer to. But I'm interested in hearing uh, all of your reactions there. Um, I want to go to 408 here, and actually on 408, this is the um, chapter that's all kind of uh, in in one page here. 
I'm going to just go ahead and read this part um, ver verbatim here and, and lead up to um, a couple questions about it. I was almost back to the pike where I came across Dillett's John Deere, crashed through a fence of slender wooden posts and dumped in a dusty lot, just shy of a bridge over the brown, noisy rush of the South Platte River. The windshield had been shattered into a dozen spiderweb fractures from the evening's rain. The driver's side door hung open on darkness. I climbed up on the running board for a peek inside. The interior was empty but scattered with bloody hundred-dollar bills. The handcuffs hung from the steel bar under the dash. Someone had left when it first looked like a filthy, uncooked sausage on the driver's seat. I leaned close, squinting at it, trying to figure out what it was, then realized it was a thumb, and recoiled so fast I almost fell out onto the dirt. My stomach turned. Someone had clipped Teasdale's thumb off so he could slip the cuffs, and when his mystery accomplice had uh, attempted to stanch the bleeding with money, there were some torn strips of bloody white silk on the floor and something glittering on the, in the footwell of the passenger seat. I reached in and picked it out, a fake gold tiara. Um, I don't know for sure what the Teasdale met the Queen of the Apocalypse. I don't uh, swear I can't swear that she cut off part of his hand to enable his escape, or that she bandaged him with ribbons torn from her wedding dress, padded with money out of her carpet bag. I could not tell you if the two of them went to Canada together. Maybe they did, though. Maybe she taught him how to walk between raindrops. Um, so this section here, um, to me, uh, I'm. I, well, rather than give my interpretation, actually, I'm going to keep this one as a question. Um, and the, the big kind of overarching question here is, why include this? What, why would this be included in the novella? This is a bit of a departure from, strictly speaking, the narrative of the story, Honeysuckle's journey and experience here. Um, what, why do we come back to these characters we introduced earlier? Why do we get this action, uh, which is kind of gruesome and kind of chaotic? Um, what, what is this adding to the piece? Um, okay, so carrying on here, um, let's see, um, I'm going to take a, a brief mention of page 411 here, um, just because I raised the question last time about the references to the president and vice president that pretty clearly seem to be referring to Donald Trump and, and Mike Pence. Um, but here we actually do explicitly name Trump. Um, so this is in lower page 411. Um, I roared, immigration, Ivan, open up. Donald Trump says he wants... Uh, we got to drag your ass back to Siberia. Either you let us in or we'll kick the door off its hinges. Um, and I'm curious about the invocation of the name at that point, right? We, we, we talked a little bit last time about why Hill may have explicitly not referenced that, that name. Um, what does it say that he is bringing in at this point? I'm sort of curious to, to reactions to that. Um, carrying on here to page 422. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so yeah, this short paragraph is towards, uh, a little more than halfway through the page. Uh, isn't that the truth, Ursula said, and hit him in the back with the machete. Um, so I, I want to ask about kind of the, the structure of this paragraph, right? We get a very short line of dialogue, we get a very sudden action, and that's it for the paragraph. We keep moving on from there. And I'm curious of the, the impact of having something so sort of uh, abrupt in the, in the way that this is structured, and if people had any thoughts on that. Um, Okay, going on to just uh, as, as one final note. Um, so um, again, pl please feel free to kind of you know jump all over this novella and, and bring in things we haven't explicitly talked about yet. I'm sure our, our groups will go there as well in the group-led video discussions these next couple classes. Um, but I wanted to kind of turn back to a bigger kind of idea fr from this novella um, that is never explicitly mentioned. It's something that I, I think about a lot when I reread this thing, though, um, which is the question of uh, what do nails do? Right, um, kind of the premise of this story, the the setup for it is essentially nails raining from the sky, um, and and obviously wreaking havoc, all all, all of this violence. Um, so with this, um, the purpose of nails, right, um, is this idea of sort of keeping things in place, right? We nail something, we nail boards together, we build things with nails, we use nails to hang things on the wall, so on and so forth. Uh, but in this book, it's sort of the opposite, right? It's changing everything, it's tearing things apart. Um, what once 
did stand together, um, now is falling apart because of um, this kind of apocalypse that ca caused by these raining nails. Um, and so just this idea of uh, you know, what the nails are doing in this project, um, I would suggest that um, the, the way in which they kind of operate in the opposite way that we think of nails are, are supposed to operate, um, in and of itself underscores kind of a sense of chaos in the novella, right? And kind of gets at some of the deeper messaging that's present here um, on, on a combined sort of literal and symbolic level that I, I think is pretty interesting, um, is one of my, my more favorite takeaways uh, from the novella on the whole. But okay, I'll, I'll wrap up there. Uh, thank you for bearing through a lecture that I know had a lot of logistical stuff front-ended um, and then covering a, a pretty wide swath of the text uh, in the back end here. As always, I'll look forward to our discussion. Again, no video lecture for tomorrow. Um, I'll encourage to focus our attention on the Horse Girl film, um, but then we'll pick up on Friday with a short video lecture from me, um, as well as um, um, the, the group-led video discussions, uh, and we'll have our uh, next leg of the communal writing project on Friday as well. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, I'll catch you all soon.